epistaxis is the medical term for nosebleeds, which can range from a mild inconvenience to a life-threatening bleed. In 90% of cases, the bleed is anterior, specifically from a plexus of vessels in the anterior inferior septum, known as Kieselbach's plexus, also known as Little's area of the nose. This plexus is made up of several contributing vessels that supply the septum. In a few cases, the bleed is posterior, presumed to be Woodruff's plexus, a venous plexus in the posterior inferior region of the nasal cavity, and this tends to be more severe and tends to happen in patients that already have a degree of vascular disease. In most instances, the blood will come from one nostril initially in anterior bleeds, but will come from both in posterior bleeds. The main reasons for bleeding of these vessels is mucosal compromise. This is why epistaxis is more common in the colder, drier and less humid months, as this causes damage to the mucosa and therefore exposes the vessels. Minor trauma including nose picking and blowing are also factors. Systemic causes can also cause nosebleeds, like hypertension and coagulopathies. Medications also contribute to the risk, anticoagulants in particular, but also antiplatelets, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and topical steroids, as well as illicit drugs like cocaine. In rare cases, tumours and vascular malformations can also be the cause, such as in hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. Around 60% of people will experience a nosebleed at some point in their lives, and this tends to happen more in children and older adults and the number of traumatic nosebleeds are slightly higher in males than in females. The diagnosis may appear to be quite straightforward, but some particular features to ask are the frequency and duration, which side is affected, any particular triggers, and the severity. It's also important to establish any medication use that can predispose or worsen bleeding, and family history is useful as a pattern of epistaxis through a family may point to a genetic predisposition. Using a speculum, it's usually possible to identify the source of an anterior bleed, but posterior bleeds are not typically seen. Bloods are not routinely useful, but in large bleeds there may be a change in the haemoglobin and a group and save will be needed, in case a transfusion is required later. In cases where patients are hemodynamically unstable, they are treated the same as other major haemorrhages, with resuscitation and treatment according to local major haemorrhage protocols. In epistaxis, nasal first aid involves initially asking the patient to pinch the soft anterior portion of the nose and lean forward for 10 to 20 minutes. While doing this, they should also spit out any blood instead of swallowing it, as blood is emetogenic and therefore can make the patient vomit. Cooling by giving an oral ice pack or placing an ice pack on the back of the neck can encourage vasoconstriction to help reduce the bleed, and topical agents to help vasoconstriction can also be used, such as oxymetazoline or a combination of anaesthetic and vasoconstrictor, like co-phenylcane. If the initial measures don't work, direct therapy, like cauterizing with silver nitrate or applying a hemostatic matrix is preferred, but it's crucial that any clots be removed before any intervention because topical agents may not reach the intended target through the clot, and if the clot is ultimately pushed back into the nasopharynx, it could be aspirated. Silver nitrate should only be applied on one side to avoid septal perforation. Packing is another option that is less preferable to direct measures, but it involves inserting inflatable devices into the nose and inflating them to apply pressure and stop the bleeding. These are typically left in for around 24 to 48 hours and are very painful, can further harm the mucosa and may introduce infection. Patients requiring packing are typically admitted. Surgery is indicated in bleeding that is not responding to packing or in rebleeds after packs have been in for more than 24 hours. This generally involves exploration of the nasal cavity and ligation of the sphenopalatine and less commonly the ethmoidal arteries. For patients that are then being discharged, 
general advice includes avoiding minor trauma like blowing or picking, as well as strenuous activity for several days. Very hot food or drink is also to be avoided as are hotter environments like saunas, as this can cause vasodilation and precipitate bleeding. Antiseptic cream is also given for around two weeks, commonly this is naseptin, particularly in patients that have had packing, as there is a risk of staphylococcal infection. In some cases, oral antibiotics are preferred. If patients under the age of two present with epistaxis without a predisposing hematological condition, it's important to consider the need for safeguarding.